One of the most frustrating slash awesome parts about quantum mechanics is that it doesn't tell us what it's teaching us about nature, which is kind of a weird thing to say about a physical theory. I mean, quantum mechanics appears to be correct. It's survived every experimental test for the past hundred years. It's, it's the ground uh, framework for uh, quantum field theory and quantum information, quantum computers, for, for semiconductors, for all of chemistry, for, for nuclear power. It's like, it's the core, it's the base. And so it, it works, but it doesn't tell us how it works. It's not very instructive and it's not very clear from the mathematics of quantum mechanics of what's actually going on in the subatomic world. And so the first interpretation of quantum mechanics and the major one to appear on the scene soon after the development of quantum mechanics itself and, and the interpretation that remains today as the dominant quantum mechanics interpretation is what we call the Copenhagen interpretation even though it has very little to do with the actual city of Copenhagen. The term was developed in the 50s, like decades after all of this was sorted out. I don't know. I'm not in charge of naming things, but it is called the Copenhagen Copenhagen interpretation. There's no uh, universal agreement about what the Copenhagen interpretation is. There's no universal definition. Uh, everyone disagrees about the finer points and that's one of the, the joys of working in quantum mechanics is uh, no two people agree on the same thing. The Copenhagen interpretation, the, the core of the Copenhagen interpretation is the following line of thinking. Subatomic processes, subatomic physics is so far removed from our everyday experience that it is impossible, literally impossible for us to build a mental model of what's actually happening inside of atoms or what electrons are actually doing. So we have a set of tools, we have a set of mathematical tools that uh, allow us to make predictions, but we can't actually say what's happening because it's so far removed. Anytime we try it, we're just applying our classical macroscopic thinking to a place where it simply doesn't belong. And that when it comes to subatomic physics, we have simply reached the limits of human imagination and we simply have to trust the mathematics. And so the Copenhagen interpretation is the interpretation that is closest to the pure mathematics of quantum mechanics itself. And, and it involves a few key ingredients. One of the first ingredients of the C Copenhagen interpretation is the idea of indeterminism or non-determinism. Copenhagen interpretation says that at the subatomic level, we live in a fundamentally non-deterministic universe. That when we set up an experiment to measure uh, energy states of the electron or, or where uh, an electron will go or where a photon will go after it passes through a couple uh, slits and then hits a blank screen on the other side, you know, whatever experimental setup we have, that digs deep into the subatomic world, we don't know the answer that we're going to get. Now we can describe the probabilities. We know the ranges of things we're going to get. We know uh, in general where an electron will strike a screen or in general what energy level options an electron has inside of an atom. And we can assign probabilities to all of that, but we don't know the actual answer. So the Copenhagen interpretation says that we live in a fundamentally non-deterministic universe. The second component of the Copenhagen interpretation is something called the correspondence principle, where Okay, you have the subatomic world with all these crazy subatomic physics. It's non-deterministic. We don't really know what's going on. And then over here, we have the macroscopic world. We have the classical world. I throw a ball at you. I know where the ball is going to go. And then I can predict it from uh, uh, Newton's equations. Like uh, this is pretty straightforward stuff. So how do we bridge the gap? How do you go from a classical world over here with our macroscopic rules, uh, with the physics we know and love where everything looks deterministic and normal, and then the subatomic world that is totally non-deterministic and operates in ways that we literally can't understand. The correspondence principle tells us 
that there is a bridge between those two worlds, that there is a transition from the quantum world into the classical world, that at some point the boundaries fuzz out and then you're able to go into a purely classical description of nature. But once you reach below that line, you start entering the realm of subatomic physics and that's the realm where we don't actually have a picture of what's going on. We can only develop mathematical tools that allow us to make predictions. The last part of the Copenhagen interpretation is the measurement rule, where I mentioned before, you can develop these probabilities of where particles are gonna go, but you don't know exactly where they're gonna land. But when you make a measurement, the electron actually lands somewhere. You actually get an energy level. You actually get a polarization state. You actually get a result when you go to measure. And we, the prescription for describing where probabilities are gonna go, how do we assign probabilities to different outcomes is called the Born Rule. And the Born Rule tells us that uh, the wave nature of matter where the wave nature of matter really represents the probabilities of where matter might end up. So you remember this whole wave particle duality thing uh, where everything, including the particles that make up your body and your body itself has some sort of wave-like characteristic? In the Copenhagen interpretation, the wave nature of matter is really just a mathematical trick. The wave itself doesn't uh, exist. Instead, it's a tool for calculating probabilities. So as a particle moves, the wave tells us where the particle might end up and then the wave collapses at the moment of taking a measurement and results in a single, a single answer. And so this is the Copenhagen interpretation. It is by far the default interpretation of quantum mechanics. It is by far the, uh, this is what's taught in graduate texts. This is what's taught in, in physics classes. Uh, this is the default way that physicists themselves approach quantum mechanics. And it's probably, you can debate about this, but probably the closest you can get to the actual mathematics of quantum mechanics, where it's just taking the mathematics and reading them as bare facts and then saying, honestly, I have no idea what's going on in the subatomic world, but here's a verbal description of our measurement process and our mathematical process for developing a quantum mechanical theory. Now, next time, I'm going to dig into the weaknesses of the Copenhagen interpretation. I hope you stick around and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. That's P-M-S-U-T-T-E-R and like, share, and subscribe.